right from chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning. Now, the word Genesis is a Greek word, and it means um, generation or it means creation. And in the manuscripts, the actual name is Bereshit, which is to say, in the beginning, period. That's the way it is. In the beginning, this is how it is. Now, many people teach that this earth is only 6,000 years old. And they don't understand there was an earth age before this one. Because science documents this earth is millions of years old. So does God's Word. And we're going to document that today. That um, we had an earth age before this one. A lot took place there. But as it is written, and so it is that... Uh, we have these proofs. Let's take uh, chapter 1 and let's take verse 1. Let's read it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, period. Now, let me ask you a question. When did it say he did this? Well, in the beginning. Well, when was the beginning? That's the whole thing. It was millions of years ago. Why people try to put, you know, um, when a Bible thumper can make himself look quite foolish, because we know even in documentaries this earth is much older than that, but then God's Word also declares that this earth is much older than that. Now, um, let's let's check out if we may a little bit. Let's let's go to let's go to Proverbs, the great book of Proverbs chapter 8, where wisdom was with God from the beginning. Who is wisdom? wisdom? Wisdom speaks in this eighth chapter, and it lets us know a little bit about creation. So we're going to go to chapter 8, the great book of Proverbs, and we're going to pick it up at verse 22. And verse 22 reads, listen carefully. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old, before he ever even built the foundation. Wisdom was with him. Well, how can we say that? Well, all wisdom comes from God. You can count on it. That's the way it is. Verse 23, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning, or ere the earth was. Can you last, latch on to that? Can you grasp it? I mean, wisdom bef before earth ever existed. We're going eons of time here. Verse 24, when there were no depths, no ocean, I was brought forth. And when, when there were no fountains abounding with water, I, w I was with him, wisdom was. Because wisdom is what brings all these things to pass. That is to say, God's wisdom. Verse 25, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth, before any of it. 26, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust, that's every little particle of soil, erects, of the world. And so it is before even the first little autumn of dust came to be, so it was that um, the Father was with him. You know, you're, you're not going to have that today, but I, I cannot help but go to the great book of John. I'm going to read it to you. Because a lot of people say, well, is that written in the New Testament? Well, of course it is. All things are written in the New Testament, basically, that are in the Old. St. John, chapter 1, I'm reading it. You've all read it before. You'll be familiar. In the beginning, there it is again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and walked among us. Verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. The Logos, the Word, the truth. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life 
was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and darkness comprehendeth it not. In other words, darkness can't hide light. Light dispels it, drives it away. Light is of God, and darkness is of Satan. How precious it is that our Father in both the New and the Old Testament, if you'll just take the time to check it out, God's Word will always lead you into truth. And truth is what really sets you free from anxiety, from the unknown. And once no, one knows and understands the creation, then one can better understand why we're even here. And secondly, what our purpose is. And thirdly, our destiny. That is ever, ever so important. Now, returning back to Genesis chapter 1, let's pick up verse 2. <clears throat> verse 2 reads, And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now let's take this word and, because you're going to have it heading each verse hereafter, practically, to the end of this chapter. It's called to the scholar, a polysendenton, which is to say, going back to the first, every time you read the word and, it says a lot more than just the letter and, well, what does it say? It says what was just stated, and the Spirit of God moved, uh, the Holy Ruach moved on various things and changing things, and, and so it was. Now, this would be a little disturbing if you didn't understand it, that God would create a mess. The, the, in the Hebrew, this is tuhu babuhu, without form and void. I mean, it was torn up. It was a mess. Do you really, in using common sense, do you think God ever created anything that was a mess? The answer is absolutely not. So, what we have to do then is take this word was. What does it actually say in the manuscripts? It's very important. Let's call up the Hebrew word that is translated was. It is in your Strong's Dictionary, in the Hebrew Dictionary, 1961. It is Hayah, a primitive root. And you can compare it with 1933 to exist, to be or to become, not was but to become, came to pass, okay? And that, that'll do it right there. It, it wasn't was. He created it perfect. He created it beautiful. And it became void and without form. Now, if you were a Bible scholar, you would know why. Because Satan rebelled and God had to destroy the first earth age. Why? Because a third of his children followed Satan. They were deceived by him. God doesn't want to destroy his children, so instead he destroyed that first earth age that was perfect. It was beautiful. North was true north. Magnetic north was true north. Everything was in perfect order. The earth was surrounded and protected. And it was, it was a fantastic thing. That's the way God creates things. And, and so it was. So... The earth created by God was not created void and without form. Those of you that have companion Bibles, your appendix 146, before the foundation, katabo, in, in the Greek tongue, will help you a great deal in understanding this. But there you have it. It was, was not void and without form. It became void and without form because it was destroyed. God never creates anything that is void and without form. Well, can we document that in another place? Of course we can. Go to the great book of Isaiah with me. Isaiah chapter 45. You're going to have it on the screen. Isaiah chapter 45. We're going to read verses 18 and 19. Listen very carefully and learn from God's Word. Verse 18, and it reads, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, 
God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not, N-O-T, not in vain. He, that, that is to who? Not wrecked. But uh, he formed it to be inhabited. It was beautiful when he formed it. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Verse 19, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain, voidness. You won't find me there. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. And certainly he does. He always has. So, what did it say there? It said that God created this earth not void and without form. He created it to be inhabited for his children. It was perfect. It was wonderful. And many people might say, well, what happened to it? How come it? Well, you know something? Do you know that we have documented proof in our documentaries about that great overthrow? It certainly wasn't the flood of Noah. If that's what you're beginning to think, it wasn't. But you can go to Ash Falls, Nebraska, to the state park there called Ash Falls um, uh, Park, and you will find only, I'll repeat it again, only African animals, birds, and creatures. Only animals, that's the rhinoceroses, right where they fell, because of a great volcanic eruption from uh, the state of Idaho, I believe it was, or Washington, that came over that area. And at the watering holes, these animals fell as they were, all in contact. They weren't torn up by carnivores. You can find five different types of camel. And you find rhinoceroses, even with little ones, still in the rib cage of the womb. And, and turtles and birds, all from Africa. Well, how in the world did they? Well, do you think man brought all those African animals over and planted them there in Nebraska? Of course not. It was at the Catabo, the overthrow from the found, of the foundations. When God disrupted the plates and divided the world in the, in the form that it is, if you take the United States of America and shove it up against Africa, you'll find it pretty well fits. And then you can begin to understand why those African animals are so well preserved in Ash Falls, Nebraska. It is, if you ever had any doubt and wanted the Bible proved of the first earth age, um, know, look at what is there, not what you might be told while you're there. Look at what is actually there. Look at always look at facts, and know and understand that as those animals died and their natural um, moistures drained and were leached from them, then the minerals of that area and that volcanic ash seeped into those remains and hardened them into this petrified condition, whereby they are perfect. So take like the camel's tail, even every little bone, right in, still in place, not torn up and scattered by carnivores. But then you can see how that God, in the beginning, what a beautiful earth this must have been, protected from storm, protected from everything. That's what certainly makes that trip well worthwhile. No, as it states in that 18th verse, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. And, and so it was. And so it is that uh, it was inhabited. So, you see, you don't have to look too far in God's word to see and to understand truth. Well, what about the New Testament? What do we find in the New Testament about earth ages. Do you think it isn't there? Have you ever read Second Peter chapter 3? Where it says in the end times you're going to have scoffers that will come along. Don't let them stir up your pure mind away from truth. 
they're going to try it. And God would tell you that, uh, that from the very prophets and from the apostles, you learn all the truth you need to know, for God has foretold you all things. And so it is. Well, you mean even in the New Testament we're told about different earth ages? Well, I would hope to tell you. But when I said God didn't leave anything out, that's exactly what I meant. He did not leave anything out. It's, the question is, have you read it? So, beginning then after he says, uh, where is the promises of coming and so forth, let's pick it up with verse 5, 2 Peter chapter 3, and it reads, For this they willingly are ignorant of, and boy do I mean ignorant, that by the word of God, by what now? By the word of God, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water, it wasn't torn up. It was, I mean, it was created to be inhabited. Verse 6, whereby the world that then was in its perfect condition, being overflowed with water, perished. It happened. That's the catabo. That's why those plates were split. That's why they were divided. Why? Because of God's children were deceived by Satan. Satan fell. That angel, that cherubim, that protected the mercy seat, tried to sit on it, which has a Messiah connotation, meaning he wanted to be Christ. But here you got it. You're not ignorant of that, are you? That there was an earth age before this one? You see, he's going to tell you about all three earth ages here. That one perished. Not the world. And not the earth, but and certainly not heaven, but the age, the heaven age and the earth age. It moved into a new age, moved forward. In what way? Verse 7, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, second, are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Perdition means the certainly the falling off and the falling away of ungodly men. That's men that don't belong, people that don't belong, that do not meet the requirements of salvation. Verse 8, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Well, how, how, how long is a thousand years? It's a millennium. Well, what does that mean? And it simply means the millennium is called the Lord's day. It is in the book of Revelation. It is in many other places when it speaks of the Lord's day. A thousand years is a day with the Lord. It's speaking of the millennium. <clears throat> that is the time immediately following the seventh trump of the great book of Revelation. But what is this fire business? Well, is God not a consuming fire as it is written in, in Hebrews chapter 12, the last couple of verses, the last, very last verse of Hebrews 12? God is a consuming fire. Well, what does his fire consume? Well, to you, it's the Holy Spirit that warms your heart that gives you guidance, that gives you light, understanding, wisdom that was with God from the very beginning. But to those that are evil, it scorches. It is a consuming fire for wickedness, for that that is evil. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long-suffering to usward. He's got lots of patience. Everything he promised about the second advent, about the return, about exactly how things are going to be, they're going to come to pass exactly as it's written. He doesn't delay it simply that he has a lot of patience and his long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. In other words, as the teaching goes forth, that all would repent and accept the Lord Jesus Christ and follow the leading of Almighty God where he would not have to destroy again. Verse 10, But 
the day of the Lord will come as the thief in the night. That's when least expected. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements, that's the rudiments, shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That is to say, that are, as you would read in Galatians chapter 4, verses 3 and 9, the beggarly elements of this world. That's to say, wickedness, not good. You know, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the, Hebrew, in, in the great book of Daniel, were in that fiery furnace heated seven times hotter than necessary. They weren't singed. Why? Well, as Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he said, who, how many did we put in there? We put in three. There's four. For the Son of God was walking with them. They were not singed, not one hair on their head, nor were their clothes smoking. God protects his own. You can count on it, which is symbolic of one thing. God's fiery indignation to those that love him is the comfort and warming feeling of the Holy Spirit as he touches you. Not to destroy, but to love, to understand. And so it is that um, our Father is in control. Be not ignorant of this one thing. There was an earth age and a heaven age before this. There is this earth age. But there is another age coming. But there is only one heaven and one earth that is spoken of in the Word of God. You know, Paul, when... In the 12th chapter, I believe it's 2 Corinthians would say, I, you know, at one time, whether in this body or in a flesh, a spiritual body, I, I know not, I can tell you. But I was taken to the third heaven, which means the third heaven age. That is the eternity in which we are all that overcome or are grafted into or live to enjoy and see and to understand. And how precious it is that our Father is able to lead us. Do you know, there is still another place in the Old Testament that he does speak concerning that first destruction. If you still got a question about it, that this earth is millions of years old, and that um, certainly um, our Father uh, is in control, you know, let me, let me show you something. Here is a footprint that we have, we have taken from New Mexico. This was made by our staff, but personally. And um, uh, it's over 50,000 years old, according to the University of New Mexico, where this footprint was made. The footprint just before it shows you why this one was so deep in this particular place, because he stumbled and caught himself here. But there were angelic beings. This is not a human footprint, but it is the footprint of a man from the first earth age, the time from before, far exceeding the 6,000 years or even the 7,000 years of creation. And not, not only that, but here from the great state of Texas is one tooth from a mammoth. Th this is a grass eater because here you see the ivory of the teeth for the chewer here on the top. And um, that he was a grass eater, a foliage eater in Texas. Lagoon grew there. I mean, it was a, a beautiful, wonderful place. And then from Alaska, from Alaska, is the teeth of a dinosaur rex, uh, rips and tears, a carnivore, okay, that certainly wasn't a grass eater, okay, and it is much older than 50,000 years old, and, uh, well, uh, but my preacher said the earth is only 6,000 years old, well, it's too bad he lied to you, and he's not capable of understanding God's word. Because God word, God's Word is complete. Have you read it with understanding, with wisdom that was with God from the very beginning, before it all started? 
So turn with me, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 4, when God threatens about what he did once before, how he tore it up, how he caused it to be torn up. We're not talking about Noah's flood either. Chapter 4, verse 22 of the great book of Jeremiah, and it reads, For my people is foolish. That means they're sottish. They're just a little bit on the stupid side. For they have not known me, they are sottish, that means stupid, along with foolish, children. And they have done none understanding, they are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. None at all. It's emphatic. And it would seem so when you go into certain circles of people. And then he tells what happened. Well, what he's doing, he's kind of giving a warning. I did this once before, and if you think I won't do it again, you mess with me. God does have a temper. He's jealous. 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, void, and void. And the heavens, and they had no light. Noah's flood certainly didn't darken heaven. So you're not talking about Noah's flood. 24, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. He split the plates, the land plates, divided them. And again, you've got living proof of this in Ashfall, Nebraska, Nebraska, all for the looking, and well worth the trip. 25, I beheld, and lo, there was no man. My God cleans the earth. The one that left, left this footprint I showed you, Zippo, he's gone. Right back to the Father from which he came. And all the birds of heaven were fled. There weren't two pigeons or two doves to be let loose from the ark of Noah. I mean, he cleansed it at that time. 26, I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness uh, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his furious anger. And, and he was angry. How precious it is to see our Father in action. Hey, he's got a temper. It, you know, and when the world disobeys him to a certain point, there's a time of reckoning coming. And certainly, God does not mind dropping that hammer. He said, I did it once before. Verse 27, For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate. Yet will I not make a full end. Why? Because of the election. Those that were true to him, even in that first earth age that stood against Satan, they're known today as God's elect. This is why he would say in Ephesians chapter 1, verse uh, for I chose you before the foundations or the overthrow of the world. Right? Because you stood against Satan, you didn't you weren't beguiled by him. You weren't seduced by him. You remain true to our Heavenly Father. Therefore he didn't make a full end. And he knew there would be hope. How precious this book of, of, of uh, Genesis is. You know, if you start opening it up in the beginning properly, the whole Bible falls into place pretty well for anyone. It simplifies the very Word of God. I often use this old farm boy uh, 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 analogy that if you've ever opened a feed sack, if you get the threads going just right, you can just pull the thread apart and open the feed sack. But you hack at it and butcher it and chop it up, and it's not going to open any way smooth. Well, neither is the Word of God. If you don't open it up smoothly with understanding and peace of mind to know and to understand. Now, I'm going to remind you again that the word and, as it is utilized here in this scripture, is a polysendentin, which means a lot more is said than is written. It means, and then the Spirit of Almighty God. And what is that Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit. This is why it can be said through the Holy Spirit that Christ was with him from the very beginning. Why? Because he was Emmanuel, God with us. And that light came. 
And that light lightens the world. And that light is truth. And that truth puts the seal of God in your mind whereby Satan can't shake you. He can't gain anything on you or against you. Why? Because you have the truth of God's Word. Again, all the way to the beginning in Genesis 1, whereby it stated, and the Spirit of God moved. When God moves, something gives. When God moves, His love comes forth to those that love Him. And when God moves, the enemies are in bad shape. So it's much better that you love Him and obey Him than to be an enemy of God Himself, the Creator of all things. I'm going to give you a little advice. If you're an enemy of God, you're not going to be around much longer. Because as God destroyed Tuhu Vavuhu once before, it's going to happen again. And he has a little lake all set aside in the great book of Revelation where this will take place. You don't want to go there. You want rather to be in that heavenly place when this earth in the third earth age is placed back to its original form.